Well, this little meter just came home. I got this from an auction and it's a Hewlett Packard model 400 D vacuum tube voltmeter. This unit dates from probably the late 1950s to potentially early 60s. But I've wanted one of these for a while. This is an AC meter, meaning that it only measures alternating currents. And the claim to fame of this is that it has a bandwidth that extends well into the RF range. You say, well, what's the big deal when there were other meters like this Hewlett Packard 410B that with the AC probe could measure up into the 750 megahertz region? And the answer is, is that this sort of vacuum tube voltmeter is for relatively large voltages. The lowest scale at full deflection on this is one volt. But you see on this, this will measure from 300 volts full scale down to one millivolt full scale. So if that's a millivolt, then you know this would be a tenth of a millivolt or 100 microvolts. So being able to measure fractions of a millivolt in the RF range is something that's kind of neat. You can make direct measurements on different types of circuits with this sort of an instrument. And that's what I've got in mind for doing with this meter uh, after it is appropriately restored. The spec on this is uh, essentially that the accuracy is good to within a, a few percent of full scale ranging from roughly 20 hertz up to 4 megahertz. And that's pretty remarkable, especially given the time period of this instrument. It's of note that in addition to the voltage scale on the meter and on the uh, settings here, that it's also calibrated in terms of dB. So here's the logarithmic decibel scale down here. And what you do is you add on whatever dB reading there is um, on the setting to what you read off the meter. One of the things that is remarkable about this that I didn't appreciate until uh, just unpacking it now and, and being forced to try to understand the scale is the the decibel scale here, it's, it's marked 1 MW at 600 ohms. Zero in on that just a tad. 1 MW at 600 ohms. And that's kind of a, a clunky thing. And the interpretation is as follows. This, um, this means milliwatt, not megawatt, that capital M. So milliwatt is a unit of power. So what this means is that the decibel reference voltage is what you would get by feeding one milliwatt of, maybe I should say dissipating one milliwatt of power into a 600 ohm load. Uh, if you play around with the power formula, P equals IV and Ohm's law, then you can express power in terms of voltage and load resistance, which you are given. And so if you do that, you end up with a reference voltage of 0.7746 volts, or about 774.6 millivolts. So what that means is that this decibel range, this decibel uh, number here on the meter, is what you would get if you took the voltage that you read directly and divided it by that number, 774.6 millivolts, then took the log base 10 of that and multiplied it by 20. That's what you will get in terms of the decibels there. Right? And, and you can see that now, that that's true. If this is 0.6 here, then again, let me zoom in a bit on the meter scale. So if this is 0.6, 
right? Then that's 0 0.7, 0 0.7246. So this lines up just about at um, 0 0.77 volts uh, when, you know, on the one volt scale. So that number divided by the reference number will give you one and the log of one log base 10 of one is zero and that's exactly what you would expect there okay so apparently this is a standard reference voltage in audio work i did not know that but that's the quick story of how you read that meter scale okay um one thing should bother you about this which is that the needle vein is all the way down there when i bought this it was clear that when it was rocked back and forth you can see that the vein rocks back and forth gently so i think that i can mechanically zero this and there it is okay so that's zeroed and now look you can see that it wavers very gently when you rock it so it's likely that this actual meter unit is is fine okay uh what else um this particular specimen is in pretty decent physical shape uh, it's handled the years well let me just try to fix that shot up a little bit um, i don't see any scratches in here uh, this has apparently been tested uh, in 1971 by someone with initials TS. Uh, who knows? Um, but uh, there's no scratches or obvious stains on here when I turn it around. Uh, this is not dented or uh, dinged or scraped uh, terribly badly. A few nicks in the paint and, and the whole thing is dirty, uh, dusty. Here's a property sticker from Northeastern Illinois State College. Um, so this was at one time a college unit, university unit. Uh, and in particular, it apparently belonged in the chemistry department. Uh, not reading too much into that, uh, but that's probably a sign that this saw more gentle use than if it had a sticker on it saying, a uh, label on it saying that it was from the double E department or the physics department where you would have a lot of uh, maybe junior students working with this and potentially abusing it. Uh, I don't know of a lot of, in fact, I don't know of any chemistry laboratories where you would need to use this sort of thing. So it, it, it probably saw use in, in a research lab where it was hopefully respected and not abused. The, uh, the leather uh, carrying bail on the top is not in the best shape but it's not breaking off and I certainly would feel comfortable using this to carry this unit across the uh, floor without it breaking. Uh, here's the other side again it's in, it's in pretty good shape. Um, switch seems like it works fine. The banana plug uh, casings are not broken off where uh, oftentimes you see that that uh, these have been dropped or you know sheared off in some way or broken so that's true the switch seems fine um okay so that's it's the front and the side of the unit the back of the unit uh again you know looks dirty but but not uh you know, not anything to uh write home about in terms of damage the uh the fuse i don't know if you can see this but the fuse um, housing is broken off a little bit uh you know this is this is usable safely but uh probably want to replace that at some point but let's just uh, open the fuse and so there is one so that's uh good i always like to uh look at the value of the fuse this value says four amps there is no way in the world that this would draw four amps um, this unit so that could mean that uh, this was 
blowing fuses and um, someone put a 4 amp fuse in to keep it from blowing fuses. Uh, or it could mean that the fuse was blown or lost or something and someone had a 4 amp fuse and just stuck it in. Who knows? I, I am not going to just go plug this into mains power and see if it works before opening it up and, and looking at the, uh, at the, the, the capacitors. So why don't we do that just very quickly here, because I just want this to be a short little video uh, as an introduction to this particular unit that we will then in the future go through uh, assessing in detail the insides and any needed repairs before I plug this in and try to use it and, and calibrate it. That will be in the future. So uh, I think these are the only two screws that I need to remove to get into the unit. So let's very carefully, uh, let's see, I think it comes out, yes, this front just scooches out and do this carefully because although I suspect that all of these capacitors are very leaky, uh, they aren't necessarily all leaky and they could still hold a charge. Okay, we're in and here is the unit. Um, this doesn't look like it's had work done on it, at least not obviously. There are some tubes that have obviously been changed there. Here's a Raytheon branded tube. Uh, but here's a here's a Hewlett Packard tube. This one's branded GE and so on. Um, but here's an ancient Mallory electrolytic capacitor. 500 microfarad at 15 volts. This uh, goes across the, the meter plate there, meter leads. And then there are these uh, tiny chief capacitors that are almost certainly, uh, oh, look at that. I, I found the, uh, <laughs> I think I found part of the, the fuse housing. Um, tiny chief capacitors that are almost certainly uh, sealed wax paper capacitors. So those are very likely all going to be leaky. Um, very nice, healthy looking uh, transformer there. That's, that's the, uh, perhaps I should have some more coffee. And look at all of those, all of these. Uh, no, those are not resistors. Those are capacitors. Uh, those are either called black beauties or bumblebees. And they know, are notorious for cracking and going bad, and um, those will have to be changed out as well. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit here. But, but uh, you know, overall, this this looks like it's it's in nice shape. I don't see burn marks or smoke marks or you know no scorching, uh, anything like that. You know, a lot of electrolytic capacitor cans here, multi section. Um, capacitors. Let's just turn this around to the other side. Um, you know, more tiny chiefs. Uh, interesting bit of shielding there. Uh, big black beauty, bumblebee, whatever the, the right term is. Here's, um, I don't think that's selenium. I think that's silicon full wave, uh, full, full wave bridge rectifier. The bottom side of the transformer here, very nice work. See these termination pins, um, really quality stuff. And, you know, lots of carbon composition resistors, which we will spot check and uh, maybe we'll do more than spot check. Maybe we'll try to check all of them and see how those, those have gone. But um, I think I will stop 
there. Interesting kind of terminal block construction reminiscent of the early Tektronics construction, although these are, uh, you know, these are circuit board strips. They're not porcelain, uh, but, uh, but, you know, very, very nice work and uh, very nice point to point wiring and soldering. I don't see anything in here that screams uh, of, you know, a, a graduate student fix. Although, yeah, I don't really know what is going on there. Okay, I think I will stop there because this was only meant to be a quick look see video of something I'm, I'm excited about uh, diving into and learning about and restoring and bringing back to life. Hewlett Packard 400D AC vacuum tube voltmeter. I hope you found this interesting and uh, hope you'll check back in the future as we work our way through this. If you don't subscribe, please consider doing so and leaving a thumbs up below. As always, thanks for watching.